Welcome back to the Henna Soup channel. It's Khadija here, your favorite henna hair care expert that also specializes in Ayurvedic hair care, everything herbal hair care. So today's video is gonna be about the truth about amla oil. It is really interesting. I've learned a lot. I wanna share what I've learned with you guys. Let's get into it. Amla, yes, amla is an Ayurvedic herb that is growing up in India. And it is this amazing little fruit that you see here. And here is dried amla fruit. So these little tidbits, these, these are really hard. You hear that? Hard. And they smell like tamarind, so they really smell really nice. I do really like the way that they smell, but they are really hard. So that being said, this delicious hair growth herb is a bit more of a different texture than leaf powder is because it's not a leaf. It's not a leaf. It's not one of these smooth, creamy little leaves. No, this one can be creamy smooth too, but it is still a little bit, you know, nutty. It's a kind of like a nutty kind of powder once you grind this and get a really fine powder. Adding some type of, um, so that gives it a little slip really helps a lot. And you can even do that by adding amla oil. So we got powder form, we got the oil form. What is the difference? There's a lot of differences. I strongly stand by that powders are definitely more potent. But today we're talking about amla oil, right? So amla oil does promote hair growth, but remember that the amla is being soaked in a base oil. Uh, and for our henna soaks amla oil, that one is going to be soaked in sesame seed oil. It also smells really nice, no artificial scents, nothing that smells strong and extra for no reason. You don't need a whole bunch of other ingredients. You know, you need to focus on the simple ingredients to get the best results because why go overboard for what, you know? It, it's not necessary. You're gonna get a lot more moisture out of almond oil. So almond oil, more moisturizing and promotes some hair growth. Powder, on the other hand, not as moisturizing alone. You definitely should add in some moisturizing ingredients like aloe vera powder, fenugreek, and more potent. But you know, having both of these and using them at the same time is amazing. You should definitely go ahead and use these at the same time because they are really good together. They they definitely are. So let's get into it. Let's let's talk about the science of amla first. The more organic the product is, the safer to try. The more synthetic the product is, the riskier. Ayurvedic ingredients are organic, so you're good. Feel free to explore and experiment to see how they work on your hair. So the word organic, it needs to be used properly. Products and Ayurvedic herbs and the spices in your cupboard, a lot of those ingredients, yes, are natural. Are all Ayurvedic herbs natural? If you're using them in their single form, I'm not saying any blends, but if you're just using like plants like one ingredient like amla right just one ingredient like this amla powder specifically actually yes that's natural but is it organic no 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 not all ayurvedic herbs are organic that's that's actually really misleading you have to get organic certification and that is a whole deeper process like i'll give you a good example so the moroccan henna powder that we carry here at henna soap it's natural, but is it organic? We can't say that it is organic because it's actually not organically certified, but does it make it like not natural? Yes, it's still natural, but it's just not organically certified. It's because some countries just can't afford the organic certification. A lot of places are countries where it's a women's cooperative and it, it costs a lot of money for certifications and processes and it takes time. So India is a lot more advanced. So, so yes, the alma powder that you see here is organically certified. It is definitely certified organic and has gone through those steps and we carry organic amla powder. And also the amla oil, you can get organically certified Ayurvedic ingredients, but not necessarily that they're always going to be, you know, organic. They're more likely always gonna be natural. That makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Amla, also known as amalaki, umbilica officinatus, neely, philanthus umbilica, 
or Indian gooseberry, just to name a few, is a fruit from a fern-like, bushy, sometimes not so bushy tree. It grows naturally in both the tropical and subtropical portions of India and Southern Asian countries, and parts of Africa as well. Each tree can produce about 300 pounds of fruit, which translates to about 30 pounds when it's converted into powder. See, that's a lot of amla. Mm. You know what would be really cool? is to go to Africa and see the amla growing. I would love to do that. Ooh, that's gonna be on my bucket list. One of amla's proven benefits is its effects on female and male pattern hair loss. A study done on mice in 2009 revealed that amla used topically helps block the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. The study also showed that 1% of amla in a solution oh. That's actually a photo of Moroccan henna powder that I took myself. Yeah, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm kind of in shock right now. I wonder why a photo of henna powder in general was used rather than the amla powder. Amla is like beige. Here's some amla powder. Like it's, uh, it's not the same color. So I have no clue. And that 1% of amla works better than 2% of Rogaine, which only increased hair follicle count just 50%. And plus, who wants Rogaine? It's not natural. Amala also does a good job at reversing grays and making the color of your hair darker. A study done on rats showed that Amala raised levels of catalase, and other antioxidant enzyme, which increased levels of catalase in your hair follicles means reduced levels of hydrogen peroxide, which means a buildup of melanin and a restoration of your naturally dark hair color. Amla also contains a large amount of ascorbic acid, or vitamin C, which makes a great antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory agent. It's also really good at speeding up the healing process of wounds and cuts on your scalp by stimulating collagen growth tissues. So I'm gonna check out someone that has used um, oil on their hair. Her name is Tia Obed. So let's see what happened. Let's talk about it. So today I'm gonna be trying some amla oil on my hair and reviewing the Dabur Amla hair oil. I've been seeing a lot of videos and TikTok posts lately as well as reading a lot of really great reviews on the benefits of this oil. And also it's very cheap and affordable. So I thought it would be fun to try it out myself and film it for you at the same time. The thing, she's very cheap and affordable. Uh, I don't know the current price of the Dabur Amla oil, but there are a lot of questionable ingredients. So it's definitely not 100% natural. Usually it has a very strong scent. Um, so you definitely have to read the ingredients of every oil, everything you're putting in your hair. It's so, so important. The kind of amla oil I'm using today is the Daba amla oil. The packaging looks like this and it states here that it is manufactured in Dubai and the ingredients are also listed at the bottom of the package. I basically purchased this oil at the Indian grocery store here in Australia. So if you are looking to purchase it, I'm sure you'd be able to find it at any gross Indian grocery store or you could order it from Amazon or just anywhere online basically I'm pretty sure I only paid like up four to five dollars for this uh, yeah oof, super cheap that should be a, a big old flag if you're using anything that's like super cheap <laughs> you might want to wonder for a minute why it's so cheap definitely ingredients matter so you will have to pay more you know, it's for higher quality, better ingredients that are healthier for you. I have personally never tried amla oil. I have previously used coconut oil, especially during my time living in India. I used it religiously on a regular basis and I've also tried olive oil, castor oil, sweet almond oil and a lot of other oils but never amla oil. I also wanted to mention that when you're using any hair oil, applying on a damp hair strands makes it go on easier as well as absorbs better and adds more moisture to your hair because you're locking in the water and some oils like coconut oils 
act like a sealant. So just note that you have to use an oil that works well for you. So you, sometimes you really have to use even the lock method or the LCO method, which is liquid conditioner oil or liquid oil conditioner. So play around with that and find out what works best for your hair. So anyway, when it comes to benefits of using amla oil, I found so many claims. Apparently, it's meant to reduce hair loss, treat dandruff and dry scalp, treat and prevent bacterial and fungal hair and scalp infections, as well as promote hair growth, improve dry and damaged hair, promote thick and healthy hair, strengthen your hair, as well as to darken the, your hair color or hair pigment in a gradual manner over a period of time. So basically, I did want to mention that I really don't want any of you to rigorously rub your hair and the oil like, like this. Don't do that. First of all, first of all, so take some almond oil. Uh, you know what's also great about the amla oil at Henna Sook? It has like this spout and you can pour a little at a time and you can control that. Then you spread it in your hands nice and smooth and gently. It smells nice. And then from there, I want you guys to go from the top all the way down. Then brush it through. Let's say only your ends are dry. Then just do your ends, but be gentle. Just do it like this, you know? See me pretending that, that my hair is not in my hijab. See all that? Ooh, I guess Khadija has long hair. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh. So yeah, just do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. No, no, no. Don't do that hair will slowly get darker and grow longer each time that you use it over time. And then it is also apparently high in vitamin C, vitamin A, minerals and antioxidants. So yeah, there's a lot of claims about this oil. So I'm obviously excited to try it as a hair mask and see if it produces those long-term results. I also want my hair looking nice. So let's see if that makes my hair look shinier, softer and silkier in the short term as well. But for now, let's get into the application process. And her hair is so gorgeous. So, 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 so pretty really nice mm -hmm. got that gorgeous hair girlfriend that's beautiful hair so from all the videos i've seen on amla oil they do suggest using amla oil with coconut oil or any other carrier oil in order to dilute the strength of the amla oil and because it does have a really strong perfume scent to it but you can also use it on its own if you prefer to do that wow that's too much work already so <laughs> so you have to like end up buying another oil to cut the amla but let's look at these ingredients where's the um amla you know <laughs> after you do an amla extract okay 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 story time story time so amla fruit do not produce their own oil so they gotta soak it they gotta you know macerate it gotta they gotta do their st their thing on the amla fruit to soak it in the sesame seed oil or whatever base they may be using. Dabur unfortunately uses like liquid paraffin oil, mineral oils, perfumes, other vegetable oils and different things like that. It even, even has like colorants like yellow and green and red dyes. Uh, I have no idea why though, because it's not really not necessary. If any of you have used our ammo oil, you know that it's amazing just the way that it is. So. I'm, I'm not really sure, but, but I will be very honest. Let me go back to another, another, another little story time. In the beginning, when I didn't know any better, I didn't know that they automatically sold amla oil like this. So we did have some products that had that and I didn't realize like how bad it was. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. That doesn't need to be in your hair. All that does not need to be in your hair. So the way they extract it uh, and put it in the sesame seed oil as a base, it's actually, you know, a really good percentage, but you don't need to cut it more because then you'll hardly get any amla benefits in your hair. It'll be too diluted. So when you use amla oil, this amla oil right here, you do not need to cut it. Don't add any other oils to it, uh, except for essential oils. If you want to make it smell extra pretty, have extra benefits of essential oils, yeah, you can do that. Sure, why not? It does have a green color to it as well and is in liquid form, which is good uh, for application. 
I would start by brushing and detangling my hair, then sectioning my hair into five sections or layers as I always do, and then start the application on the first layer that's closest to your neck area by massaging it onto your scalp in circular motions and rubbing motions, and then apply it along the lengths of my hair from the roots. I love the massage, but I don't like the friction on the hair strands. Those who have even finer hair strands, that's just gonna create more knots and it's just, yeah, it's, it just seems a little too rough. Uh, be very gentle with your hair. But definitely that massaging, you know, with the oil, you know, if you wanna put a little on your fingertips and get it in, you could definitely do that. If you don't wanna leave the almond oil in, you don't have to, cause you can do it as an overnight treatment as well, which is really great. But I do love the massage, it feels so good. From the roots all the way to the tips of your hair. Oh yeah, that perfume is definitely strong. Oh, I feel bad for her. Her face. And this video was made in 2021. I wish she would have given a Hannah Sook a shot, but I know she's in Australia. So maybe we should send her a bottle. I would probably personally prefer it if the smell was not as intense. It's too strong for me because they do have added perfume to it. So after that, I finish with the application. I will leave it on for one hour. You are meant to leave it in for at least 20 to 30 minutes before washing it off. And you could even leave it overnight if you wish. Wrap your head in a scarf or shower cap um, to ensure that the color is not running all over your uh, pillow covers or bed sheet and wash it off in the morning if you prefer to do that. Yeah, she's really drenched. Yeah, she has a lot of oil. Once the oil was in my hair for an hour, I did wash it off in the shower. And please make sure to shampoo your hair twice. Yes, that's twice in order to make sure that you are getting all of that oil out of your hair and scalp. Yeah, so I get that. Yeah, now I understand why her hair was drenched. So <laughs> she's going to be washing it out, which is fine. I think that the overnight treatment you know, could be a little bit convenient and also you can give it a little bit more time to stay in your hair and then you can wash it out in the morning. You could definitely do that. How you have to wash it out depends on your hair type. You have to recognize and learn what your hair will be or react to. She, she knows that she needs to wash it out twice. You have to judge like your hair, you like based on like its needs individually. So, cause this can apply generally to a lot of people with these techniques and these steps. But the little tiny things of like how you wash it out, you know, depend on if you need oil. You obviously don't want to wash your hair to remove all the oil if you actually need moisture. So you got to find that balance. So lather nicely and then you can condition your hair as normal with your regular conditioner. But make sure you are applying less conditioner than usual and only use it along the lengths of your hair rather than on the scalp area. And this is what my hair looks like now after I've washed, blow dried and straightened my hair. Her hair is very, very, very gorgeous, beautiful. She does have beautiful, healthy hair. Uh, I think that she could have got away without maybe not using any heat um or straightening if which is depend everyone has their own style and the way they like to do their hair i i would love to see her air dry her hair and just see how it came out it's definitely feeling a lot softer silkier and smoother as far as the growth and the color is concerned, obviously we won't be able to see it within one use, but I will update you when and if I do see a difference. I will continue using it for a few more weeks and I will update you, but it has kind of toned my hair because it had a very strong green pigment to it. And because I had bleached and dyed my hair previously, it was kind of turning a little bit brassy and it was fading to like a warm toned brown color. And now it's a bit more ashy and like a more cool toned brown color. So so in the package it does claim to darken your hair as well yeah that was super cute though i definitely love her approach that she shared her experience and she was honest because i know i've heard deborah smiles but i thought they changed the formulation and then i looked at the date and i was like 2021 oh that, that's that's recent that's pretty recent so you don't have to go through all the extra hoops with something that could just be from hennesuk that smells lovely there's no perfume there's not even essential oils in there it just amla and sesame seed oil it smells very nice i love it love it love it it's definitely an og oil that we have here at henna Sook, so yeah so yeah when you're getting amla oil it's really important to make sure that you're getting the best 
kind of almond oil. And this is what I wanted to share with you all in this video is all the benefits of amla, amla powder, and the amla oil. So click the link in the description below and you'll get this amazing recipe for your hair and face with amla. So thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell so you get notified. And that way you can follow all the videos that I have coming up because I got so much that I want to share with you guys. Definitely follow us on Instagram because we are about to hit 50K and we're going to do a 50, 50, 50 giveaway. Wonder what that means, huh? Who can figure out what 50, 50, 50 is going to equate to? Ooh, it's going to be amazing. And not only that, right here on YouTube, we are about to hit 40k that is crazy i'm so excited because the channel has been growing like like just mad crazy it's been growing and growing and growing so we have something for you right here on youtube stay tuned for the next video coming up soon i'll see you next time bye